Welcome to Region Weather Live, your YouTube source for weather across the Dakotas and Minnesota. I'm meteorologist Brad Warner, and here we go, folks. Uh, the storm is here. It's the weekend, finally, and uh, boy, we're in for a whole assortment of precipitation between rain and snow and sleet and freezing rain and thunderstorms and severe storms and all that fun stuff. So let's get on into it right now. And by the early morning hours of Friday morning, we're going to see this area of rain that's developing in central parts of North Dakota that's pushing to the northeast increase across north central and northeastern parts of North Dakota through the early morning hours of Friday morning and in through northwestern Minnesota as well. Now some of that's going to be a mix of rain and snow and maybe even uh, some sleet and freezing rain for a bit as we step through uh, the morning hours. Now thankfully as we've said before uh, there's a whole lot of warm air and moisture out ahead of this that's going to continue to push to the north and is going to take that cold air and push it north and keep that uh, rain and snow uh, north of our area throughout the remainder of the day on Friday. Now here's another weather map that I found and if you look in the upper right corner up there you can see the timestamp in local time. Uh, so that should help you kind of follow along but this one uh, just kind of follows the rain. It doesn't really give you uh, what type of precip it's going to be but uh, gives you a good idea on the rain and the thunderstorms possible throughout the, the morning on Friday morning. And then also further back to the west, uh, you notice there probably will be some light showers uh, into central and western parts of North Dakota. There is an awful lot of moisture out here still. Uh, so even though it's really not picking up uh, through this region here, you're probably going to see uh, some fog and some drizzle throughout much of the day on Friday. So uh, just keep that in mind that even though you're not <laughs> really showing up anything on this particular map, map, there's a lot of moisture to work with with this system. Now out in the east, East, uh, especially uh, eastern North Dakota in through northern parts uh, and central parts of Minnesota, uh, rain will continue throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. Taking a little bit further out to look and get a better look at all of Minnesota by this point at 8 p.m. on Friday. Uh, boy, you can see a lot of rain out there across the central and northern parts of the state, as well as across much of North Dakota. Probably still some drizzle out here. And then uh, note down in uh, southwestern and western parts of South Dakota, we get these storms that are developing and they could be severe, starting out uh, severe uh, with even the potential of an isolated tornado or two, uh, especially at the onset of that uh, of those storms. So, And those are expected to move north, northeast uh, throughout the nighttime hours. And so as they reach into North Dakota, some of them could be severe still. Uh, the tornado threat will be gone, but you know, there still is going to be a hail threat associated with this. Now, also note uh, the storms that are developing along this line uh, that's actually associated with an upper level warm front and there's a pretty good uh, low level jet that sets up overnight so a lot of strong winds at the uh, one kilometer level uh, above ground and what that does is that helps fire off these storms up here now what you're going to see with them is a lot of lightning so uh, if you're up around midnight take a look with these storms as they move from south to north as you could get quite a light show but the other thing that could be associated with them because uh, they are going to be very high based meaning the base of the cloud is going to be fairly high off the ground compared to what you normally see in the summertime uh, that also means that there's the possibility of some hail with it so you might get an isolated uh, severe uh, storm warning uh, through the overnight hours uh, across North Dakota, maybe northwestern Minnesota, uh, just uh, due to the possibility of hail reaching a severe category. Now you also notice another band of uh, rain and storms through central parts of South Dakota developing overnight. And these just kind of rotate around the system. That first one uh, moves off to the north, and then uh, this band uh, continues to move off to the north and east. And then we get a bit of a, a dry uh, air that gets pushed in through here uh, by the early morning hours. And that's going to be interesting uh, as to how that could set up the possibility of some severe weather later in the day across eastern portions of South Dakota. As you can see, the storm pops up right around noon already around the Huron area and moves to the northeast. 
and uh, continues to move in through North Dakota and in through northern parts of Minnesota. So possibly another round of severe weather associated with that. Now, because of that, the uh, Storms Prediction Center, the SPC, has got most of South Dakota in a slight risk with a marginal across much of Minnesota. Now, this is for Friday and in through southeastern, south central parts of uh, North Dakota, and then just some general thunderstorms across uh, much of the remainder of North Dakota. Uh, and this is valid um, through Friday, Friday night, and into very early Saturday morning. So uh, mind you, this takes into account that band of storms. Uh, uh, first of all, that uh, um, uh, the severe storms down in the South Dakota area, down along the Black Hills, that could be tornadic uh, or start off with an isolated tornado. And then also that band of storms that fire up overnight and move north. Uh, and then on day three, uh, that area moves a little bit further east, and that's because of that other line of storms that develop later in the day on Saturday, uh, where we could see a line of storms forming from Minnesota uh, down through the central plain states associated with this big low. Now, as for the winter side of this storm, here we are once again uh, Friday evening, and uh, these are the thunderstorms that develop along the Black Hills region and moves to the north, northeast. Now, that moisture, as it moves to the north, will eventually run into some colder air. So you can see uh, some freezing rain and some sleet developing across north central and western parts of North Dakota. And then as we get later into the morning, uh, this is around uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning, uh, more of that transitions over to snow as we get later through the morning hours on Saturday. Uh, now, that snow in the western parts of the state could be moderate to heavy at times. Meanwhile, you'll notice uh, still, as we've talked about, uh, areas in the eastern parts of the Dakotas through Minnesota will remain uh, rain and thunderstorms. Now, also associated with this uh, is going to be some strong northerly winds. Uh, so as this snow is falling through Saturday evening and uh, Saturday night and into early Sunday morning, some of this uh, could be, you know, it could be moderate to heavy. So with the strong winds, visibilities will be reduced. Uh, road conditions will continue to deteriorate. Uh, one bit of interesting thing that uh, the latest models have now started to do uh, is develop this band of heavier precipitation overnight Saturday night along the Devil's Lake Basin region and then uh, just north of Grand Forks um, to where that could be a, a rain or a snow or a freezing rain mix. Uh, this is new and a couple of models are now showing this so something we're going to keep an eye on but it uh, looks like maybe that Devil's Lake region uh, might have the possibility overnight Saturday night to pick out uh, pick up a fair amount of snow. Now, meanwhile, out in the west, uh, western parts of the Dakotas, uh, light snow continues. Uh, more of that moderate stuff now is over in the Devil's Lake and James River Valley area. But we continue with the strong north-northwesterly winds throughout the nighttime hours, so uh, likely reduced visibilities and poor road conditions will continue in western and central parts of North Dakota through Saturday night and early Sunday morning. Now, finally, that low begins to move off, uh, move off to the northeast. Uh, one other little change that's been kind of noticed here is the eastern parts of North Dakota uh, really don't get into the snow until almost late Sunday morning. So uh, that's a good thing for them. Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, the, the transition takes a little bit longer there as that low just kind of holds in all that warm air just a little bit longer than we were thinking. Uh, so that very likely means, obviously, uh, not as much snow accumulations across across eastern parts of the Dakotas, uh, particularly uh, through South Dakota, um, but also, you know, uh, areas where we were thinking maybe could pick up uh, four inches of snow. Now it's looking like it's going to be one to two inches in some areas. Uh, and then through the Sunday night time frame, that low continues to move off uh, to the north and east. And uh, by uh, 9 p.m., most of these areas uh, west of the Red River Valley have now uh, lightened up as far as the winds go. It looks like the winds pretty much are relegated to the northern parts of Minnesota. Uh, so overnight, Sunday night, it looks like some areas across northern Minnesota, you guys might not have the best night, but at least you're not going to pick up a ton of precipitation or a ton of snow anyway with this. Now, with the wind gusts associated with this, here we are starting off at Saturday at 7 a.m., and you can see uh, 50s across north-central parts of North Dakota, and then some in the northwest as well, and starting to pick up a little bit across western parts of North Dakota now as we go along through the morning hours and by 11 a.m. 
uh, still just kind of hanging around north central northwestern parts of the state uh, now mind you these are some of the areas that picked up the freezing rain and sleet so uh, if there's any accumulation of ice on power lines or trees uh, that could pause a pro uh, cause a problem in some areas if we're talking winds uh, gusts of 45 to 50 miles per hour maybe greater uh, at times uh, so that will be that'll be a concern throughout the day uh, on Saturday now as this kind of wraps up through the day it really takes a little bit for those winds to kind of come back in uh, it's really not until early Sunday morning until we start to see gusts back into the 40s and then uh, 50s down in through southwestern uh, parts of um, or western parts of South Dakota but we're looking at 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gusts uh, eventually moving into the central and western parts of uh, North Dakota so uh, definitely looking at some blowing and drifting after we've now uh, accumulated more snowfall throughout that region. All right, what are we talking about as far as snow accumulation go with with uh, goes with this system? Uh, we're looking at uh, through these western port parts of the Dakotas. And boy, if I could talk tonight, that would be great. Um, <laughs> it's definitely the end of the week. It's been a long week, uh, but anyway, through western parts of the Dakotas. Uh, we're looking at 12 to maybe 15 inches of snow out there could be an isolated area or two that would pick up as much as 20 inches in some spots so uh, definitely that's that's where the hardest hits going to be is out in western parts of uh, north dakota now it does look like you get a bit of a break in through here uh, if you want to call it that but still uh, even in through here you're going to be looking at uh, anywhere from three to five inches of, of snowfall through central parts of north dakota now uh, with that other band that uh, apparently wants to develop uh, through the devil's lake basin um, you know possibly eight inches or more uh, through here uh, something we're going to have to keep an eye on. I, I'm not super confident of that at this point, just because this is a, something very relatively new that uh, has just come out with the latest model. So we'll see if that uh, continues to show up on uh, later models as we go along. But uh, if that does develop uh, late Saturday night, uh, we could pick up over eight inches of snow through the Devil's Lake Basin region. Now, uh, otherwise, once you go south and east of there, you know maybe one to three inches across the uh, Red River, Va uh, River Red River Valley. Again, I just can't talk tonight. Uh, and then westward, uh, up right up to the uh, James River Valley. And notice uh, across much of northern parts of Minnesota, not much snow at all, an inch at most for most areas. Now that other thing we have to talk about is the accumulation of any freezing rain or sleet. And you can see uh, where the latest kind of shows up uh, through the north and across the west. Uh, so just take this with a grain of salt as to exactly how much is going to fall. Uh, but uh, I think it looks like the heaviest is going to be kind of in that Minot area. And then up along the Turtle Mountain region uh, where they could pick up over a tenth of an inch of ice. Uh, and if we're going to be seeing some stronger winds up there, that could cause some problems as well. Uh, when we're again, when we're talking about power lines and tree limbs and all that fun stuff, uh, and then road conditions obviously are going to be very slippery, uh, no matter where this ice falls. So you're putting down some ice and then some snow on top of it. It's not going to be very fun driving conditions. One last thing to talk about is just how much overall precip are we looking at? And you can see here through the purple area, all that is uh, relatively with in an inch or more and the red is two inches um, so there is going to be some spots that due to the thunderstorms that develop um, where they could pick up over an inch of rain uh, in some of the heavier thunderstorms uh, mainly uh, we're going to kind of call it in through uh, this region here uh, so even if you're you're seeing you know an inch or less uh, man if you get a good thunderstorm overhead you could pick up a quick inch and a half or two so um, but that, that's the amount of precip that's going to be falling or is expected to fall across the region so uh, some flooding is definitely a concern I've, I've read that through the weather services across especially across North Dakota with all the snow um, and just uh, with some storm sewers being plugged with snow uh, the rain just is not going to be able to go some uh, go anywhere so 
uh, urban areas might see some street flooding. Uh, maybe out in the country, you could see some uh, overland flooding um, with all the rain on top of the uh, snow and all the moisture we've already had out there. So uh, just something really to keep an eye on or to keep, uh, also to you know think about on top of everything else uh, that we're going to have the potential for flooding out there as well with this system. Woo. Uh, that's a lot to talk about. And as we get into parts of next week it takes a little bit for the temperatures to rebound uh, but they do by wednesday and into thursday and uh, as we get closer into the weekend uh, we've got plenty of warm air out ahead of another system that it is pulling out of the rockies uh, but uh, again the only thing this thing really is going to do is help bring in some warmer air out ahead of this if this system does develop at all um, but the models are definitely looking at the potential of a warm-up by midweek and that definitely is a good thing. That's something we are all waiting for. That is for certain. All right. Well, that was a bit of a longer one. That's because we had a lot, a lot to cover with this big storm over the weekend. And that's going to be it for me, at least until Sunday night. Um, I might be on live at some point on Saturday uh, if the severe storms do develop. So just, you know, please subscribe to my channel down below. Hit the little bell button as well, and that'll notify you in case I ever am live. Uh, your phone will give you a little ding and say, hey, um, uh, Brad's on now. Maybe you want to check out what he's saying. And, and maybe I'll just pop in to see what's going on in western parts of the Dakotas as well if it really gets interesting out there. So... Uh, I appreciate everybody for subscribing that has so far. You've, we've gotten over the 100 mark. In fact, last I saw, we were at 117. Um, for me, that's great. That's fabulous. Thank you, everybody. Um, I've got a busy weekend ahead. We've got uh, the Play Puffs. My daughter is going to be in at Sacred Heart in East Grand Fork. So if anybody's living around there and needs something to do, uh, go see the play. <laughs> uh, but otherwise... Uh, we will uh, see you, uh, if we don't pop in at all this weekend, we will see you uh, late Sunday night, early Monday morning for the next update. And hopefully we'll just be talking about more warm weather. For Region Weather Live, I'm Brad Warner.